question of the day. <clears throat> All right, so find the range of the function algebraically. Um, so I believe in my fourth question, I talk about the inverse, and I'm going to just redraw this. Um, I'm just going to redraw this diagram here. So we have our x, <coughs> which is our domain. Uh, and we have our f of x. Oh, we have our y's, and this is related to us by the function f or, in this case, they use y. Right, so this is our range. So uh, f inverse. Also, okay. Sorry about this being blue. I didn't mean for that. So f inverse is going to take our y values and bring it back to our domain. So what the inverse does, in our, when I explained it in our question number four, is that it takes our y values, our f of x, and turns it back to x. In, uh, in other terms, it takes the range of our original function and converts it to its domain, and the domain of the original function becomes the range. So now, the domain of the inverse function is going to be the range, and the range, or the domain of the original function, or the range of the inverse function is going to be the domain of the original function. If that makes a sense, okay? <coughs> So a strategy that can be involved to calculating the ranges of original functions is to find the inverse function and then find its domain. Once you find a domain, then it's equal to its range. Another strategy is that you can just look at and evaluate the nature of the function itself and come to a logical standpoint of what the range is. Or you can just graph it out and see where uh, the range lies. Okay, But we're going to use this inverse strategy because it is the most... Um, I guess it covers, we don't really need to use our rationale or we don't need a graph, right? So it's kind of the easiest way. <coughs> okay, um, so we have our function here. x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. Okay, so we're going to isolate for x. Okay, um, so if we're going to isolate for x, then we're going to, first of all, cross multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. So we get x minus 2 times y. Equals x plus 5. Okay. If we expand, we get x times y minus 2y equals x plus 5. Okay, so we're going to move this 2y to the other side and move this x to this side. So we get xy minus x equals um, 2y plus 5. Okay, and then we're going to solve for x. So we are going to factor our x, and we get this. And finally, we isolate, and we get 2y plus 5 divided by y minus 1. Okay, so now we have found the inverse function, which is uh, a function of y that, make, that converts it to an x value, okay? Um, so now we want to solve for the domain of this new inverse function. Okay? So we know that the domain of this inverse function is going to be, so we, we see that this is a rational function, so that means that most values of x make, it, make this function valid or define this function except for y equals 1 because when the de denominator is 0 then we have an undefined value. Okay, so we notice that the domain of this function is y such that y belongs to all real numbers except for y cannot equal 1. And this is going to be our range. Because like I said, the domain of our inverse function 
is the range of our original function, and that's what we're trying to find. So this is the range of our function. Range of y equals x plus 5. 5x five minus 2 is y such that y belongs to all real numbers except y cannot equal 1. Okay, so that's the range. So, um, so the solution is correct. All right, so uh, that wraps up today's lesson. Uh, I covered 12 questions around mathematics. Uh, so if you have any other questions or issue with your homework or tests or assignments, please submit them to one class and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Other than that, I wish you guys a good night and I hope you guys learned something. Bye, guys.